Item durability in Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is actually super cool and engaging, and if you're complaining about it online, then you're a big dumb idiot baby with no understanding of compelling game design. Is what I would say if I was one of those jerks on the internet. <laughs> I, I don't actually probably think you're a big dumb idiot baby. I'm sorry if I tricked you, I love you, mwah! But I do really enjoy the item durability mechanic in these games, and I was shocked at the initial outrage about it when Zelda Breath of the Wild came out, and, and I found myself shocked again at all the outrage rearing its ugly head for Tears of the Kingdom upon its release. And then I'm sitting there thinking, why? Why? Why do I like the mechanic so much? Why is it so engaging for me, and why are people on the internet so wrong? And I think I can answer the first two questions, at least. I'm not touching that third one. And maybe even convince you that item durability is cool, actually. Hey, my name's Joe, and I like it when my sword breaks. Let's dig into it. Let's rewind to March 3rd, 2017. I'm back, living at my mom's house, and going through community college. I have somehow accumulated enough money for a Switch and Breath of the Wild, and I'm standing in line at Target first thing in the morning with like five other people who are waiting for the store to open uh, so I can secure that new open world hotness. They let us into the store, and the tiny crowd of us rushes back to electronics. I frantically ask an associate if they still have the special edition, and he looks at me confused because of course they do. Only like five people showed up to grab copies first thing in the morning on a weekday? <laughs> but I get my fancy Sheikah sleep case and coin and I head home to boot up the game. And holy moly, I was enthralled right from the get go. I'm running around, I'm exploring, jumping off the stuff, and finally enter into my first combat and I'm smacking the shit out of some goblin or whatever and then my fucking tree branch breaks? I sit there in shock. Surely, it's just branches and stuff that break, right? I look it up, and no. Weapons are temporary objects that will fall apart in your hands as you use them. What kind of mechanic was this? This was bullshit. Who in their right mind would put a mechanic like this in a Nintendo game? I was used to only ever being hampered by an inventory limit. My whole gaming life, I'd been able to hoard all of my weapons and tools to my heart's content. Obsessing over the moment that they might come in handy. And now, all of a sudden, Nintendo is just gonna, just gonna break everything? Just let it dissolve? I was irritated, but I kept playing. The game was beautiful, and wandering the open world was such a, 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 honestly, a therapeutic experience for me. And then, I was changed. I wasn't irritated by the weapons breaking anymore. I found myself cackling with glee when one would explode as I made the finishing blow on some unsuspecting begoblin scumbag, and then I rushed over to grab his weapon and stabbed his friend in the face with it. <laughs> I wasn't being held back by item durability. I was being freed by it. So, I'm one of those people who forms emotional attachments to objects. I'm not entirely sure why or where it started, but I can impart great emotional significance to things. Look, I, I can get rid of stuff, and I try really hard to not get hung up on items that no longer serve a purpose, but there are things in my life that I'm really really attached to. Magic cards that represent memories of traveling with my friends, w worn out clothes I can't wear in public but from a special place in my life, uh, receipts from dates and excursions that mean a lot to me. My potential crafting supplies I'll never use and are overwhelming me and probably going to bury me soon, but I'm attached to their possibilities. While thinking through the script for this video, 
I read a lot of articles in psychology journals about object attachment, how it can lead to hoarding issues, and whether or not it's its, its own separate psychological thing, and while that's fascinating, I realized that I am not equipped to do a deep dive into something that psychologists spend years studying, but it makes for very interesting reading, so if you've got the urge, go uh, search Google's academic thingy for them and go to town. And if you think you let your object attachment get out of control, there are ways you can get help. So this part was going to be like a, a brief little sponsored segment where my phone was going to ring and it was going to be a FaceTime call from myself. <laughs> I, I don't know, it was silly, but I was going to be like, Wow, Joe, uh, you're calling yourself from the future. And uh, I just wanted to talk about this little zine that I wrote. Uh, my fridge and air conditioning both died in the same weekend and it sucked. It was a really depressing week and very expensive because I was also getting a bunch of dental surgery around the same time. Uh, so yeah, I wrote a zine about it and... Ow, cat. Excuse me. And uh, I don't know, I wrote about it and it felt really nice. It was really therapeutic. Um, and all of my patrons got a copy of the zine and there's still some left that you can pick up on itch.io slash mtgjot and a, a second print run in my TikTok shop so yeah, you could go read a zine. There's a free download on itch too. And if you buy a copy, it helps me save up for a new fridge. Back to Zelda. So the point is that my object attachment definitely transfers to the video games I'm playing. Inventory management is a stressful, emotional hurdle for me. I get attached to these random weapons, health items, and, and knickknacks. But trashing things or leaving them behind, even for better options, is a struggle for me. Managing my little attache case while I was streaming Resident Evil 4 was killing me inside. I didn't want to leave any weapon behind, because what if it was useful later? They'd served me well so far, and it would be a betrayal of them to trash one. Luckily, I was on stream and I had to keep things moving, which helped me make those decisions. But if I had been playing just by myself... Forget about it. These new Zelda games force me to stop that kind of behavior, uh, to an extent. I still tend to hoard resources if I'm not being cognizant about it. Oh my god, I am drowning in spicy peppers. Weapons and shields being temporary, transient tools allow me to live in the moment. I can't get too attached to any of my weapons because they're going to break. And that's okay, that's the point. It doesn't bother me anymore. I've embraced the gleeful feeling of freedom that weapon durability presents. And I feel like Tears of the Kingdom leveled this whole thing up too, with the ability to like combine stuff into new weapons. It feels so good to destroy an enemy with a weapon, have it blow up, take a, a stick off the ground, and, and fuse some horn or whatever from the dead enemy to that stick, and then stab the enemy's compatriot right in the face with it? Yeah! You know? I guess I sort of understand the outrage consuming people and the internet when it comes to the item durability thing. I was a little taken aback at first when Breath of the Wild came out, but I learned to love it and my love has only grown with the release of Tears of the Kingdom. I think, instead of being outraged though, we should try embracing durability and the limited life of weapons. Every time a weapon breaks, you have an opportunity for a new, exciting experience. You get to try new things, approach problems in a new way, and maybe carry that over into real life. Remember kids, every problem is a chance to dismember an enemy, glue their body parts to their weapon with magic, and then kill their best friend with it. Hey, listen! <laughs> Huge shout out to my patrons over on patreon.com slash mtgjod. Y'all are lifesavers. I hope you enjoyed the zine that got sent out to you this month. Uh, and remember, if you want a zine and you weren't a patron, uh, you can get a copy on itch.io or join the zine club over at patreon.com slash mtgjod. I had too much caffeine. We have some newer returning patrons this month and they're highlighted in the graphic that should be appearing on screen right now. My dollar tacos, I love you. Five dollar Phillips, the old zinesters. Uh, Vesuvius and Tom, thank you so much. 
I love you, friend patrons. The Driz fam, Meg, thank you. All right, friends, I love you. Be good, make good choices. I'll catch you next time, right around uh, Phantom Liberty's release. <laughs> Talking the politics of cyberpunk, finally.